Welcome back to Bailiwick again to Shipwreck. I'm JP Fallays and today we're going to go out scuba diving. And we're going to go looking for what we normally go looking for is king scallops. Uh, it's a lovely day for October and we've got to keep our fingers crossed because the wind's due to come up this afternoon but I think we're going to be alright. I think we're going to have a good day. Just check it out in the background. That's awesome. And it's not actually that cold even though I'm wearing my bonnet. It's the Sandhill boat coming back. Shanker Downs. There's a nice little retro boat behind. Cool minty colour. As usual, we're going out on Richard Keane's boat, uh, Sylvia K. Nothing like an easy start, Diesel. <laughs> Cold start. Done. Welcome back to Bailey Cagones and Shipwrecks. I'm JP Fallais and you're going to join me and Martin Gian on a dive on the cement wreck. We've really got to make the most of it while the visibility is like this. And the visibility is still fantastic at the moment.
first jobs first we've got to secure our shot line which is this piece of rope that goes from the surface down to the shipwreck uh, which divers come down to make sure they actually hit the shipwreck we're going to tie this into the wreck somewhere uh, one thing we have to do is uh, trip the anchor so connect the chain to the top of the anchor so when you pull on the rope from the surface it doesn't dig into anything it basically comes up like an umbrella This one was a shot actually hit the shipwreck, but it was a two-man job to pass the anchor up. And basically, we just hang it on the side. When Matt and Paul come down afterwards, all they need to do is uh, unwrap the rope and throw the anchor off the side of the shipwreck. So when we retrieve it, it doesn't get caught up. And jobs are good. Same again. Every time on this shipwreck, we tie into the bollard. So we still have quite a bit of fish on here. These are bibs and there's a couple of pollock there. You might know them as pelt. Some are striped, some aren't striped. It's actually really nice to see a load of fish on here still. Oh, almost forgot my strobe. Let's put a strobe on. Two jobs. Tells people that uh, the divers are still on the wreck, and the second one is guide you back to the shot line. But I don't think we'll be needing the guiding back this time because it's really good visibly. So it's up to Molly which way, which what do you want to do? I've got no dive plan for this. It's literally just turn up and have a look around. The big conga looks to be missing at the moment. I don't think anyone's caught it. She's probably just gone for a swim somewhere else. No doubt behind the wreck somewhere else, but she's not in that. This tube is actually the derrick, or the horizontal uh, tube, off of the uh, loading crane. This one that's in the gun. She's a bit uh, wary, that one, so I wouldn't go too close to it, because it, in the last video I actually had Matt's camera. There's also a lot of other stuff on this wreck today, which we didn't see last time. So if you can see just above her head, uh, this is an upside down um, anti-aircraft gun. Uh, there's a, what we call them in Guernsey is a shanker. Um, everyone in the UK calls them brown edible crab. I think even um, one of our subscribers, Martin from Jersey, said they call Guernsey crabs in Jersey, which is nice. Give me another one of them dives where you want to turn your lights on to look at stuff in close, but you get a bit of backscatter. So I'm just going to use Molly's torch for a bit. I think what we're going to do is probably have a look down the side of the ship. Now it's fallen out. Um, every time we come here, it's slightly different. So there's two things that are destroying it. There's the tide, and I think there's the marine life is also uh, destroying it to a lesser degree anyway. So some of the crabs are actually getting inside the uh, hold and digging their way in looking for worms and stuff like they do there's a ginny wheel here it's quite a big ginny wheel must have been from one of the derricks possibly could have been deck cargo coming to the island possibly getting used by the germans for uh, fortify fortifying the islands during the occupation and you can see a lot of uh, lot of broken up cement now So it's worth mentioning this shipwreck is ideal. It's sitting upright in 30 meters of water. Uh, on a good day you might get 32 meters, but um, this is ideal for the advanced scuba diver. So your advanced qualification takes you to 30 meters. Here we go, this is a decent sized cock crab. So the females are hens and they obviously lay eggs. And this is a cock crab, which is a male crab. The cock crabs are slightly bigger. But believe me, you do not want to be getting your hands anywhere near these claws because they will just uh, completely decimate your fingers. In fact, it could even chop your fingers off. So we're very careful around these things. They do taste amazing. Not as nice, in my own personal opinion, as a spider crab. But they do actually taste really nice. Not as sweet. Give them a little stroke. This is a big, big-sized crab. 
not the biggest I've ever seen, but it's a decent size. Get a few sandwiches out of that. But we're leaving him here today. We're not here looking for fish. And is it? Oh, this could be the big conga we've seen. Potentially just found another hiding spot. Every time we dive on this, which is quite a lot, we do see uh, a change on it. So you can see here, uh, this is what I mean by marine life are also uh, destroying the wreck to a certain degree. So they're digging these little holes and basically the tide then can get into these little holes, wash out the sand, um, which ultimately makes the shipwreck collapse. Plenty of hidey holes for congas. So what Molly's noticed is loads of whips, so the whips are the small congas, the ones, you know, not much bigger than your fingers really, they come up and uh, stick their heads out, have a little look around. As you can see here, this is the size of the rivet holes on the plates, and the same size as my finger. It's all riveted together. After the Second World War they started welding boats together. So what we tend to do every so often is come out on the sand. We have found quite a few shots that other divers have lost anchors and bits and bobs. So we just come out and have a look. We, we noticed a piece of rope, so we'll come over and give it a little pull. See what's on the end of it. Oh, whatever it was, it's snapped off now. So it's actually quite nice. It's just similar to looking in a fish tank, really. You just sort of sit back, have a little look. Almost watch the world go by. There's Martin, look, he's just have a little sit on the sand. Watch the world go by. Now we're down towards the bow area. Well and truly falling apart now, look. You can see it here. This is the bow. At one time there's plates and all of this and used to swim in there. It's got four minutes left before going into deco. We want to do some more dives after. Ah, <laughs> Molly's found some scallops. He put him back though, he won't take him. So yeah, four minutes left, so gonna make the most of it now. I'm gonna come in and have a look at this area because this area seems to be pretty smashed up now. It seems to be falling out onto the seabed. I could just sit and watch that for hours, just watching fish mill around. Really cool the uh atmosphere now where you can see through the shipwreck. There's one of the small whips. That's actually quite a big whip. You do get them as like as thick as your finger. They're the ones that keep coming out and uh, gulping. I don't know if they're feeding or I don't know what they're doing. Could even be just breathing. I'm not quite sure what this is. Looks like something that was bolted to the side of the boat on the inside. Got to be quite careful now around this part because it is very delicate. Here's another shanker. Hidden up. What you, you tend to find them like this in exposed areas, hidden upside down sometimes on the side, uh, just feeding. I'm sure they're feeding in, uh, stuff that's just wafting in the in the tide. And you can see more more damage plates that have either been hit by something or uh, just naturally just peeling away from the self. You can see there's a big wedge. The weight of the cargo that's inside the boat is also. Uh, um, exerting pressure at 45 degrees onto these lower plates near the bilge. They're just old and they're falling apart now. This one's always interested me, this area at the front, because it looks so deformed. So basically what happened with this one is the Royal Air Force aircraft attacked at about 20 past 8 in the morning and she was struck out of a water line uh, on the port side forward of number one hatch. So this bulkhead uh, we just seen to the left. That's basically bulged in from the impact, I believe. And then also when it sunk, it sunk down and hit the seabed and put a nice crease 
in the bell area in the bottom of the stem there so everyone died on this one it sunk in five minutes um, fortunately everyone died including the Dutch captain it was with another a vessel called the Meteor and uh, escape with slight damage it's about that time when we check our air and also think about a time to turn around and go back so normally with a shipwreck dive you turn around around about the 120 bar which is half a tank but we are thinking about the next two or three dives we're going to do in the day so basically we just need to uh, um, manage our bottom time and our deco rather than our air I think this must be the first time ever I've witnessed someone doing a dive on a dive. So Martin gets up here and he's getting ready for it and he's off. And the tides call him. Oh, there's not a tide. This middle part of the wreck, just near the winches, normally hides a few big congas. Look at the size of this wrasse. This is a ballon wrasse. Absolute monster, probably a female. Lovely to see, and you can get so close to some of these fish. They're used to us being there. There's two more shankers. Almost look like Cornish pasties, the way they've got their sort of, almost the fingerprint marks around the top of their shell on their carapace. Do you dare me? Do you dare me to pull its tail? Boop. Nah. I want to keep my fingers, thanks.
Checking the time, it's half past nine and they're in, they're in the water. So Matt and Paul are in now. Some big old shankers in there. Just thinking, I hope Matt's radioed the harbour to let them know. He would have, I would have thought. Water temperature is starting to drop, 16 degrees. Uh, yeah. It's going to dive off now. Mo, you still got the diving skills, eh? Yeah. That was an underwater diving dive. Yeah, it was a bit like this. Got off oh, yeah, it's brilliant. Uh, Watch your hat still, aren't it? We all thought when he was younger he's gonna go semi pro. I could have gone pro if it wasn't for my leg. Yeah, both your legs. What was wrong with both your legs again? Uh, I've got two left feet. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's because you couldn't dance either. Eh? Yeah. I remember now. <laughs> oh, Timothy! <laughs> Maybe she was born with it. <laughs> yeah. Coming up. So we're getting issues with the cameras again. I'm gonna put Matt in now. We're going to go by the stones by the ammo rack. Okay. So we should have several at the time. Right, okay. Pull the armor, but we've got no shipping to it once. Okay, I'll, I'll radio. Gonna be a swim. Isn't it? So we've just radioed the harbour to make sure that we're okay to dive the ammo or sail for the ammo. And they're gonna come out of salary, past Matt's head, and then into Havlet. So we gotta uh, just watch out for them. Top secret location. Oh yeah, I'd say. In front of the harbour. <laughs> Go south. What have we got, John? We have got 26 meters. Please, everyone, go south. Okay. Hang on. Go in the stern. And there they go. Like I say, radio the harbour. Because you look how close we are. It's a south running tide. And there's divers. Well, they're not divers, sorry, those are divers. There's swimmers that are going to come out of here, swim in front of the harbour mouth and then into Havlet, which I've never seen before. Never seen them do that. But fair play to them. Something different. I take it them little luminous things up there have got something to do with it. The yellow things. The green and red is the cardinal markers to get into the QE2. Oh well, fingers crossed they uh, get enough scallops to pay for the fuel. back up, lent him a tank, give him some air. Not bad. It's a 55 I reckon. That was a fast time wasn't it? <laughs> Bit hectic. Molly's back's broken. 100. Oh, 
Let's get back up to Paul. Wait near him. Someone coming up our stern. Let's go and stand by Paul. Divers. Did you get any? Huh? Did you get any? Nah. Was that fast? Mm. What's the sweat bottle for? Huh? What's the sweat bottle for? Ah, I just quite like them actually. <laughs> That's right, it's one of the ones with the seal on the bottom. Oh, nice. Have a little look at that. Well, are we going to get up and in back into the harbour before the summers come by? Maybe not. Oh, Matt's found here. Teapot. Teapot. After a radio in the harbour now. Possibly a teapot there. How many more? 79. 79. I underestimated. Just stay, stay away because here come all the swimmers. Look, 52 apparently. Two kayakers and then the RNLI rib escorting them. Okay, the little balls. Yeah. The inside mechanical. Yeah, they're watching. Yeah. And the one I've got them is cracked. So like, oh, that's a good idea. That's a food. Um, yeah. Food or a sauce or something. Yeah, like. I keep the little sh the lead shot from out that cannibal. Yeah, look nice. The one I've got of them is sweat. It's a wonderful one. Yeah, it's a nice one. Nice, nice little bottle of that. Nice. nice bottle. Don't think I've ever seen that before. No. Home time. Mega shallow. Yeah, not much 
much room. That's solid rock. This is a fish.